Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. A telephone call was held today between His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Prime Minister of Pakistan Imran Khan. During the call, His Royal Highness was reassured on the health of the Prime Minister Khan and wished him a full recovery from COVID-19. In return, the Prime Minister Khan expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's well wishes. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister of Pakistan discussed the depth of the Bahrain-Pakistan relations and means to increase cooperation across various sectors. The general state budget for the fiscal years 2021 to 2022, which His Majesty the King ratified following its approval by the Shura and Representatives Councils, was based on three fundamental principles, lowering the government's expenditure while maintaining social support for citizens in need maintaining the quality of public services with high efficiency and effectiveness with the aim of committing to the fiscal balance program and stimulating economic recovery and creating promising opportunities for citizens. The ratification of the state general budget came as a result of the cooperation between the government and the legislative authority while prioritising the interest of the homeland and the people in a manner that meets aspirations despite exceptional circumstances and challenges that the Kingdom and the world are witnessing in light of the coronavirus pandemic and the drop in oil prices in world markets. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, gave a government media briefing organised by the National Communication Centre in cooperation with the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments as part of the series of government briefings held remotely. Sheikh Khalid bin Ali affirmed the importance of the new expertise project and the Justice Electronic Transformation, recently approved by the Cabinet adding that it will contribute to reducing the length of litigation before the courts and improving the quality of technical reports. He said that the new project is one of the essential projects that aim to raise the level of the performance effectiveness and the speed of achievement. He noted that the project, which will be referred to the Representatives Council, is considered one of the most important initiatives that will fundamentally change the organisation of the expert work before courts. The Minister hailed the efforts of the Information and E-Government Authority in achieving electronic transformation for the service provided by the Ministry through the National E-Government Portal. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, met today with the Minister for the Middle East and North Africa at the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office, James Cleverley, following his visit to the Kingdom to participate in the Bahrain UK Joint Working Group. During the meeting, the Foreign Minister welcomed Cleverley, praising the close historical relationship between Bahrain and the UK and the growth in various fields. He also noted the advanced level of bilateral cooperation and coordination that serve the common interests of the two friendly countries and peoples. He stressed the importance of the constructive role played by the Bahrain-UK Joint Working Group and the relentless efforts it exerted towards enhancing joint cooperation relations between the two countries, as well as the need to continue consultation and joint coordination on all political issues and challenges facing the region. For his part, cleverly expressed his pressure in visiting the Kingdom, praising the development of bilateral friendship and cooperation in various fields. He also stressed the British government's keenness on strengthening cooperation. In the meeting discussed bilateral cooperation in various fields and ways to develop them to serve common interests, in addition to discussing developments related to political and security situation in the region, as well as a number of issues in the regional and international arenas. After that, the two ministers chaired the 13th meeting of the Bahrain-UK Joint Working Group, during which they reviewed the issues and topics on the agenda, including security, multilateral and trade cooperation, then signed a joint action plan. The meeting was held in the presence of the Ambassador of Bahrain to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. 
the Chief of Public Security, Lieutenant General Tariq Al Hassan, the Assistant Foreign Minister, Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabbar Al Dosuri, the Under Secretary for International Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Iman Ahmed Al Dosuri, the Coordinator in the Prime Minister's Office, Yara Raraz Faraj, the Director of Operations Directorate, Ambassador Khaled Al Jalama, and the Director of European and Europe Affairs Directorate, Ambassador Sheikh Aisha bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. On the British side, the meeting was attended by the UK Ambassador to Bahrain, Roddy Drummond, and his accompanying delegation. Under the patronage of the Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil Humaydan, the Arab Labour Organisation and the Arab Centre for Labour Management and Operation held a virtual discussion session in Tunisia as part of a course on labour standards. It was attended by members of the Free Labour Union and was held virtually. Hamidam praised the efforts to raise consciousness of the Arab labour standards in order to build a balanced relationship between business owners and workers, which reflects well on productivity, stability and growth in the labour market. He affirmed the importance of such efforts during the pandemic in order to preserve the health and safety of the workers without affecting the interests of business owners. For his part, the director of the Arab Labour Organisation, Faisal Mabari, said that the Arab Labour Standards take into account the circumstances of the Arab Labour market and affirmed the importance of observing all measures to protect the interests of business owners and workers. The chairman of the board of the Free Federation of Labour Unions, Jakob Yosef, also affirmed the importance of holding such events and preserving the rights of workers as per Arab and international standards. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain expresses its solidarity with the brotherly Arab Republic of Egypt in maintaining its regional and maritime security and protecting the interests of its people and the right to life, as well as its efforts to achieve regional peace and stability. The Ministry also expressed the Kingdom's support to the efforts exerted to resolve the crisis of filling and operating the Renaissance Dam in a manner that preserves the water and economic rights of the countries of the Nile River in accordance with international laws and allows the countries of the Nile Basin to achieve the ambitions for development and economic growth in order to maintain security, peace and stability in the region. The International Institute for Strategic Studies IISS, held a roundtable discussion today in the Kingdom of Bahrain with British MP and Minister for Middle East and North Africa in the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office, James Cleverly to integrate Bahraini youth in an active discussion with high-level government officials regarding strategic and security issues in the region and the future of relations between the UK and the Arabian Gulf. To speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by Research Fellow for Middle East Policy at IISS Middle East, Mr Hassan Al Hassan. Hello Mr Hassan. Hi, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Tell us about the role of IISS in empowering Bahraini youth through the Manama Dialogue for Young Leaders. Absolutely. So the IISS is a leading global think tank with a focus on strategic and security issues. Uh, and the IISS Middle East Office here in Bahrain organizes the Manama Dialogue, uh, uh, the region's premier annual security forum, which places Bahrain at the uh, center of the global defense and, and security policy discussion. Uh, so at the IISS, we were delighted yesterday to host uh, the private discussion with the Right Honourable James Cleverly, uh, who serves as the UK's Minister for the Middle East uh, and North Africa. Uh, and the event uh, enabled a number of young Bahrainis uh, who are part of the IISS Manama Dialogue Young Leaders Programme uh, to engage and interact with the Minister uh, on the topic of the UK's uh, future role and presence in the region. Uh, so we at the IISS are very much committed as part of our mission to further enable uh, Bahrain youths to interact with high-level policymakers from around the world. Uh, the IISS is a unique forum here in Bahrain uh, where informed and relevant discussions are routinely held on issues including foreign policy, security and defence. And that was the Research Fellow for Middle East Policy at IISS in Middle East, Mr Hassan Al-Hassan. Thank you for joining us. 
Following ongoing efforts to limit the spread of the COVID-19, the Ministry of Health announced the opening of an additional drive through testing centre at the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club in Sakir to increase the capacity of laboratory testing. The Ministry affirmed that the plans and strategies proposed to mitigate the spread of the virus are being implemented promptly to ensure the safety and security of all citizens and residents in the Kingdom. The Ministry stated that the testing centre is being run according to the highest standards in line with the recommendations of the World Health Organisation. The new testing centre will commence operations today. The Ministry called on the community to benefit from the facilities made in order to mitigate and control the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 502,541 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 253,008 had taken the second. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 8,613 with 689 recoveries, 905 registered new cases and four deaths. 241 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 549 are contacts of active cases and 34 are travel related. The deceased were male and female citizens both aged 62 and two male expatriates aged 49 and 50. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everybody to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.